All right, guys, we're getting ready to uh, device out our kitchen outlets. All right, device out just means we're going to put the devices on, devices being the outlets, the GFI outlets uh, that we're going to be putting on, and uh, regular receptacles as well. I wanted to show you the tools that we're going to use. Got them laid out here. We've got a simple voltage tester. And the reason we're going to be using this is, you know, we don't know if these wires are hot right here or not. The breaker's on, the breaker's off. Uh, we can always test them with our voltage tester, and if the little light comes on, it'll tell us that we've got juice on those wires and that we need to turn the breaker off, all right? You do not want to be wiring up your outlets while the breaker's on, okay? Make sure that your breaker's off, and the way you can find out if it is off is, you know, check to see if there's any voltage, any current in the wire. So we're going to use a voltage tester. A uh, simple shorty screwdriver just for tightening up screws for the outlets and the screw play covers and whatnot. Um, one of the, uh, the most important tools is probably these wire strippers right here. All right, these are made by Klein. It doesn't matter what type of electrical strippers you use. They've got a little cutting jaw in the center where you can nip wires off, and then they've got a series of small holes where you can strip off whatever gauge wire you're going to be stripping. And in this case, we're going to be doing outlet wires, and we know that's going to be a 12 2 wire, so we'll be stripping out with the one that's marked 12-2 and there's marks for every size gauge wire on the end of these so we'll be using those and you're probably going to want to have your some type of cordless drill with a Phillips head bit in it ready to go just makes things go a lot quicker so uh, that's really the only tools that you need to device out Tom's getting ready to uh, figure out where we're going to begin Tom yep uh, here we go uh, what we got here in a kitchen circuit Whenever you're doing kitchens, everything is 20 amp. So we're going to start off with a 20 amp GFI, ground fault interrupter circuit. Uh, it's just a special, it's just a special receptacle that will trip. Uh, yeah, and you're required to have two of these in your kitchen. We have one circuit on this side of our kitchen for our designated kitchen circuit number one. Our designated kitchen circuit number two is going to be on this side. Uh, because that's how that's how we wired it and if you remember earlier in the video we wired our hot in we came up with a hot in and then we just uh, like extension cord or Christmas tree circuit we just came in with a hot wire which I know these are my hot wires here because I stripped them out these are my feed wires they're coming uh, from the panel these box. These come right from the panel box the mm -hmm. feed wires okay then from there we just have two wires they're gonna plug into this outlet and continue to circuit over to here then we're going to plug into here, continue to circuit over to here. We're going to plug into here, continue to circuit over to here. And that's the end of the circuit. And that's the end of the circuit. That's, okay. how, the, that's how this place was wired. So that first box there, you know, we said that's our hot wires this coming in. This is our hot wire coming that, in. That would uh, also be our home run, right? Yep, that's our home run coming right out of the panel. Okay. First thing you want to do is make sure that your circuit's off. It says we're off because the light didn't light. How do you, how do you light. test that? You just touch uh, you touch these two wires onto your bare stripped wire. Doesn't matter which one goes on. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, either and or. Doesn't matter. I can show you. Uh, 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 just to show you how this thing lights up here real quick, here's a live circuit over here. And if we plug that in there, you'll see our little lights will light up. 110 it says. Okay. Alright, as long as we don't see that light light up, we're good to go. We know we're, we know we're not going to get shot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I test it that way. It says we're dead and I can touch them so I know we're dead. Okay. Alrighty. On these, uh, on these GFI outlets, you have what's called a line in. That's the one where your home run has to go. Your the one coming from the panel has to go to the line. And the line is usually it'll, it, it's marked line, not that you can read it. And also the line is the one without the yellow tape on it. Okay. So when we plug our line into the bottom of this outlet, this outlet will be hot, and then everything after this will also be on GFI protected. And we put the after wires on the upper screw. So your okay. line in has to go on these two screws here. Okay, so the line in will be a white and a black? It'll be a white and a black. Uh, two different ways of telling what's what. Your black wire goes to the crisscross 
Uh, I mean, your white wire goes to the crisscross. Your black wire goes to the smaller of the two holes, the harder of the two holes to get into. Also, your black wire goes to the dark screw. Your white wire goes to the silver screw. Okay. So you have a silver screw and a dark screw. And, uh, and then another way, if the screws aren't marked, the harder hole, the harder hole to get into is your hot hole. Okay. And you know, because that's a, you know, you can see that's a, this, that the hole is actually smaller. That's your hot hole. Uh, we like to put our grounds down. Some people like to put their grounds up. Commercial jobs, the grounds go up. Uh, the, the ground is this bottom hole here. So we're going to be facing all our outlets with the, with the bottom hole down when we complete the job. Just as a, as a final thing. Uh, to start off with, what I do is I strip this hot wire out just about three quarters of an inch, right about where I was. Okay, these wire strippers are set up actually to do a, a 10 wire, a 12 wire, a 14 wire. So my second hole is a 12 wire. I'm going to go ahead, these actually plug into the screw and then the screw tightens up. So these are stab locks. Yep, uh, they stab right into the back. Making sure I got my white wire in the white hole. That's very, very important keeping your white and your blacks where they got to go. That's literally just going to sit inside there and then we tighten this screw till we know that it's on the wire. Okay, so the back's marked where the where the wire actually goes in. Right? Yeah, the hole that I stick it in is marked. So I stick the the stripped wire in the hole tight. Yeah, the and you actually have two holes in there too. You can put it in either hole. Okay. So my white wire's in the hole. I'm gonna go back and put my black wire in the hole. And they're both on the bottom of the. Yep, GFI. the ones that are marked line, the ones without the yellow right. tape. And on. that's the and that is the hot wire coming to feed yep, the circuit. That's the, the line coming in. Okay. The line coming. Now what in. if I don't have. Uh, a GFI circuit in my kitchen, Tom, and, I, and I'm hooking into the existing wiring in the kitchen. Am I still going to have a white and a black going to that? You should definitely still have a white and a black, and you should have an operable ground. You can always upgrade to a GFI circuit. Okay. Uh, this sometimes, sometimes your ground wires need a loop. Sometimes they don't. This particular outlet, the ground wire also just slips right in a hole and tightens up. So I'm going to loosen my ground wire here. The ground wire is this green screw. All right, that's pushed in. Making sure that's pushed in. So the, the, the green. The green screw. is your bare ground. That's your bare ground. Make sure you always hook up your grounds on. Any outlet, any switch nowadays has to have a ground wire, should have a ground wire. So now if I turn the breaker on, this outlet's going to work. And, uh, and, uh, once I plug this wire into the top part, the load section, these two wires in the load section, it's going to continue my GFI circuit right down the line. We'll show you when we get them hooked up how when I trip this breaker, it shuts off this outlet, that outlet, that outlet. It shuts everything, everything that's plugged into the load will shut off after right, the so line. So by having the GFI receptacle in the first position here, yep. everything following it, these other three outlets then become GFI protected. Yep, but we can but we're gonna use a standard receptacle from here on out. We only need one GFI. We need one GFI which is that'll like a, shut, turn everything and that's on like and a off. fifteen dollar ally. Yeah, fifteen, seventeen, and then these 22. are about and these are about a dollar. Uh yeah these are a dollar eighty nine. Nowadays uh your outlets have to be tamper resistant, TR, at least in Pennsylvania. Our code is tamper resistant. Okay. Uh receptacles. Okay. And like I say in a kitchen it has to be a 20 amp GFI okay. to start the circuit. And traditionally, you should have two, at least two 20 amp GFI protected circuits in your kitchen. You have two separate. You have two separate 20 right, amp so circuits. So this hot wire that fed this circuit is on a separate breaker in the panel box than this one over here is going to be. It's so there's on, two yeah. separate breakers two for this separate kitchen. Two separate 20 amp breakers, and each each this outlet over here, this breaker here, is actually only running three. Three receptacles. This breaker over here, 20 amp breaker, is only running four receptacles okay. in the entire kitchen. So that means you can have a toaster oven, a uh, blender, uh, uh, you know, a commercial size mixer plugged all into running it, at and once. mashed potatoes all running at once, and it should not trip a 20 amp okay. circuit right. using these four breakers. Okay. Uh, that's the that's the reason behind it. I'm going to go ahead and just complete this one up. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm stripping these out three quarters of an inch using my second hole in there. Okay. So I got nice straight stripped out so I can remove this tape now. Okay. And nine times out of ten, 
So let me ask you something. If I wasn't putting the other three in, in, in a row here after this one that you're doing now, I would just leave that tape on there. You could, yep, and just wire into the line side of the GFI. So the only time you really need to break the tape and do the top side of the GFI is if you're going to add more outlets behind it in what they call yep. in series, yep, correct? Yep, yep, yep. Absolutely. All right, and in this case we are. We're adding one, two, three more outlets that we want to be GFI protected. And because they follow behind the original GFI, if it trips, they all trip. Yep, and we'll show you that. If any one of these has a short or gets wet, which is what it protects you from, a shock from, you know, wet dampness, if any of these have a problem and malfunction, no matter which one has the malfunction, it will trip the GFI breaker and they will all go dead. Yep. Uh, just something you want to keep in mind, when you're pushing these in, I'm going to just show you right and wrong. This is correct where my white wire is going in. Because when my wire is plugged in, I have no bare wire sticking out. So I, I have it plugged in, my white on my white side, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this screw up. And the white wires go on the lighter screws. Yep, and the white wires go on the lighter screws. Black ones go on like the yep. gold screws. Now if you're connecting your wires and it looks like this, I think I have to loosen that screw. Okay. If you're tightening your wires and it looks like this when it's pushed in, That's wrong. you don't want that. It's too you much. don't want it's bare too ground shit. sticking out. So what do you do? So you just take your wire and cut it off. Cut a little more off. Yep, cut a little more off. And when it's pushed in, it should be all the way to the to the end of the plat. You know, yep. So there, there's really no, no bare metal show. Exactly. That's the correct way of doing it. And then tighten your screw. And that way no ground wires can touch it or anything once you yep. push it back in the box. Yep. I'll show you a little trick when you're folding these back into the box because uh, sometimes they're a bitch to get back in there. Uh, what I do is I straighten my wires out, my grounds are down, and I put a, I put a bent loop, uh, an S in the wire. Uh, I mean, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but I put an S in the wire, then I push it back in. Then all my wires push it all back in together. They all accordion back in there. Exactly. There, that's the perfect word, accordion back in. And I'm going to leave that like that because we have a ceramic backsplash going on here. So, I mean, I'm just going to leave that right, uh, you know, because we're going to be pulling it out and pouring it in. All right. When you get to one of these right here, where you got two black and two white, this is just going further down the line. First thing you want to do is you take your outlet, take your outlet, put a loop on your ground. The grounds are important, so from this, from here on out, hook up your ground first. Uh, what I used to teach people to do electric, Always tell them, hook up your ground first, because that way you know your ground's hooked up. Okay. So my ground's hooked up. Without even looking at the screws, without even looking at the screws, the harder hole, the smaller hole, the harder hole to put something into is my hot. Okay. The bigger hole is my white. Okay. That's my bigger hole, silver screws. Hard hole, black screws. So my black's going on the harder hole or the dark screws. Right. My whites are going on the silver screws right. or the bigger hole. In the old days, the uh, hot screws were black. Uh, sometimes sometimes you, you'll actually go into a Lowe's or a Home Depot and uh, you'll buy a commercial outlet where all the screws are silver. They're all aluminum. Right. Uh, if you make that mistake, you can still use it. But just keep in mind, the black goes on the harder hole right. if all your screws are the same color. The harder hole being the smaller yep, of the two the holes. Smaller, yeah, the harder hole to stick something into. It's, uh, these, your strippers here, I'm using my 12 hole stripper. I'm stripping that out about three quarters of an inch. I'm sticking my copper wire just through there and I'm putting loops on these screws. All right, so the hole in that, in that uh the upping tool is what yep. you're using to, to bend these wires. So. I only need six inches sticking out of this box, so I can actually, just to make my wires tuck in a little easier, I can actually cut some of them off. So you're stripping back about a, what, a half about inch? About three quarters of an inch. Okay. Putting that through there, and I'm putting my nice tight loop on there. All right. And those loops are actually going to go right around the screw. All so right. there you have it. This one's ready to uh, right. screw so onto the so outlet. Strip them three quarters and put the little bend on the little yep. loop. Another way of telling which one your wire or your white wire is going to, the same side your ground screw is on is the same side your white wires go. In case you're colorblind, you can't see the silver screw and the black screw. Okay. Whatever side the ground wire is on is where these white wires go. Right. The see ground they, will never be on the same side as the hot side. No, and see how they both looped right around that screw and I'm, I'm kind of just pulling the wire snug. I can go ahead and tighten these two screws. 
nice and tight. Don't uh, these are nice uh, 10 30 second screws. I don't think you can crush them if you're trying to nice and tight. When you flip your, if you do your white side first, when you flip it over, your outlet's in the direction we want it to go with the ground down. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put these, uh, the two black wires on here. Nice, if you loop them correctly, these black wires go on really nice. So I got both my black wires on there. I don't want them, uh, I'm just kind of like snugging that up so I know my loops are tight to the screw. And we'll go ahead and tighten these up. And we're just going to continue this procedure right on down the line. All right. So the next two that we're going to be doing here are going to be exactly the same. Going to be just like that one there. All right. So. Okay. So there you got. All that. right. So there we go. We got. Uh, there's your GFI circuit. Starts with the GFI because the GFI is always coming in from the home run. And we showed you how we hooked the uh, home run to the bottom side of the uh, GFI outlet. Um, put the black and the white and the ground on and then we cut that piece of tape on the back side and we connected uh, the first black and white wire in a series of wires that are going to run down through all of our outlets here so everything on this side of the kitchen is GFI protected we're going to do the exact same thing over here yeah um, we're going to start I believe it's this first one right here yep basically we're going to do the same thing over here the first ones that are stripped out I know are my hot Drive faster than you can.